What's up folks, I'm Alex Story, just your average online dungeon master, just trying his best, and wow, um, this channel has seen a lot of traffic recently, and I know that most of the traffic is because of the ongoing crisis, forcing folks to switch from their tabletop groups to online play, so, you know, I, I hope everyone's doing great, but, you know, either way, welcome to the channel, and I can at least do my part to make playing Roll20 and, and Dungeon Dragons Online as seamless and as easy as possible for you. So we're here today mainly because Roll20 has updated how dynamic lighting works on their website recently. And I've got a lot of comments with questions about what's changed and how to use it and basically how my old video is obsolete. So it's probably a good time to make an update video on what has changed, how to use dynamic lighting in the, the new way, this new light that launched in April and uh, what we can do from there. So. In, in many ways, it's it's the same. You know, you can access the lighting from the page settings and to get there, all you gotta do is click on the little blue page toolbar button. And then from there, when you hover over the page that you wanna activate dynamic lighting on, you click that little gear. And from there, you'll see it right there. And then you'll see all the glorious options. So you'll notice that dynamic lighting has a big updated sticker for now. Uh, and that's mainly because they are they wanna really let folks know that the legacy dynamic lighting will be updated eventually. They haven't given a hard date when everything's gonna switch over, but they want people to start using this now. And um, first off, this is, it's, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. You'll notice that instead of like the kind of ugly checkbox that was there before, you've got these cute little graphical buttons. So you can just kind of toggle them on and off and they're nice and easy to use instead of being kind of ugly. And you've noticed, uh, you'll probably notice that some of the names have changed. And first off, let's talk about dynamic lighting. So dynamic lighting, uh, all that does is that really just turns everything on the map dark. And really the only thing that a player can see at this point is the stuff that they can see um, if their character has dark vision or if they have a light source, then they can see that far depending on how far their light source emits light. If they have a torch or if they have like a light cantrip ca uh, cast on them or whatever. Then there's Explorer Mode. Now this used to be called Advanced Fog of War, and basically that's a neat little feature that allows players to basically see everywhere that they've been on the map. It'll be kind of grayed out, uh, and then that way they don't necessarily retread if you're on like a larger map. They won't actually, they won't accidentally go back to where they used to be. So it's kind of a cool little way to show how far they've gone in a dungeon. And then lastly, there's Daylight Mode. Now this used to be called Global Illumination, and this is super useful if you want a map to, if you want to restrict sight for whatever reason. Um, maybe you're in a, like a forest dungeon, which is technically like outdoors, but you don't want folks looking over to the next like, uh, like open clearing, for example, because they haven't got there yet. You can turn on Daylight Mode, and because you know, they don't really, really need torches because the sun's shining on everything. That just makes it where everywhere is bright on the map, uh, is Daylight Mode. It used to be called Global Illumination. So yeah, let's, uh, let, I guess the next thing that kind of changes how tokens work. So if you go ahead and uh, before, when you open up a token, you'd have to go to the advanced tab to kind of control everything that they saw. And you had this little section on the top right here where, you know, it's kind of emits light and all this stuff and all players see light and has sight and all this fun stuff. It's a little confusing, but now they have this new section here, similar to the page settings where it's just vision. Does the token have vision? Uh, does the token have night vision? So let's say, you know, maybe they're a, so vision would be every player character. And then night vision would be like dark vision. I guess they couldn't call it dark vision because, you know, copyright I'm guessing. But night vision is the ability to see without light. So you can toggle that on. Then you have the opportunity to change how far they see. So most creatures, it's gonna be 60 feet. That's how far dark vision works in uh, in dark lighting. Uh, if they have superior dark vision, that would put them up at 120. So let's say a drow, for example, would have 120 or somebody with like goggles of night, for example, that already had dark vision before. But for now, we're gonna leave it at 60. And then this last section is how how far that this token emits light. And I like what they did before, because before, if, if you scroll up, the la the old version had this weird like, like, okay, let's say it does 40 feet total and then it starts the dim light at 20 feet. That gets a little confusing. So this one kind of like broke it down a lot easier. It, how, in two sections. So basically, is there bright light being emitted? Yes. All right, how much bright light is being emitted? Uh, and then you can take a look at most light sources. We'll show it right on the, on the page. So for example, let's take a look at torch. So let's say this character is holding a torch. A torch um, has a 20 foot radius and dim light for an additional 20 feet. So basically bright light for 20 feet, dim light for 20 feet. So now I just gotta say, okay, bright light for 20 feet. Boom. And then low light 
would be another 20 feet. And at the very bottom, you can see the total light is 40 feet. So you, it takes out all the hard math, and boom, you have torches. So that's what's changed about the token. So that's all the different options that you see on the page. I'm gonna go ahead and untoggle everything. And we're gonna go ahead and uh, put into action everything that we talked about. So to do that, the first thing I need is a map. So we're gonna go ahead and use this map that, I'm, that I've got from, uh, this is from Meditating Monkey. This is the Dwarven Keep, I believe is what this map is called, one of the one of the floors of the Dwarven Keep. And you can do this with any type of map that you want. It can be hand-drawn, it can be toggled together with tiles, it can be whatever you want it to be. So I'm just gonna use a pre-built map from Meditating Monkey, and it's just a Dwarven Keep, and I have my character here, Hargus, uh, who's just a dwarf, maybe praying at this, like, I don't know, statue of a Dwarven guy, whatever. So now I gotta add in my walls. Now before I talked about adding in walls, um, it's pretty straightforward. All you gotta do is go over to the left here. Make sure you're on the dynamic lighting layer. So all you have to do is click on, uh, it's usually probably set to tokens, a little box. And then you go and drop down to dynamic lighting, which is a little fire. And then from there, you can draw your walls. I like using the polygon line tool for my walls. You can also use shapes if you'd like, but I, I'll show you why polygon line is usually, usually better. And I always like to use colors that are very bright because I want it to be super easy for me as a dungeon master to see my walls uh, in the future. And a nice trick too is to use different colors for your doors than you want for your walls. So for example, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna go ahead and use green, bright green for my walls. And I'm just gonna start over here. And uh, it looks, looks like I can't click off the page. But basically, you left click where you want like your uh, junctions to be. And for some reason it's, okay, we're just gonna start this way. And then when you're finished, you right click. So for example, if I wanted to stop here, I'd right click and now I don't have to do that anymore. And I'm gonna change my color because I want doors to be a different color. So I'm gonna use bright pink for my doors, boom. And then I can kind of put one over here too. And this just makes it super easy for like when we're actually playing. And let's say a, a player character says, I wanna open that door. I can quickly go to the dynamic light lighting layer, click on the pink door, then move that so the players can get through. But all right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward while I finish putting up my walls and doors here. See you in just a bit. So now I have my map with all of its walls set up and doors. So I have the green walls and the pink doors just so I, I can make it nice and easy when I'm playing. And keep in mind, the players don't see the walls, right? So when the players will see this. Players will just see this. They won't see any of like the actual stuff going on behind the scenes that is restricting their vision uh, or restricting their movement. Um, only you'll see this when you go to the dynamic lighting layer here. And uh, I like to keep it nice and bright to make it easy for me to move when I'm in the middle of a game. So the next thing I wanna do is pay attention to the lights. So we have several rooms here that have torches in them. And uh, you know, we, we wanna make sure that these, you know, brasiers are lit up and they are emitting light. And how do you do that? So to do that, all you have to do is add a token to the dynamic lighting layer and then have that emit light. Now, any token on the dynamic lighting layer will be invisible. So it doesn't matter what your dynamic lighting layer token looks like. Uh, it can be whatever you want, right? So I like to just use this little light source thing and you can find whatever you want. Most stuff is free, right? You can just type in light and you can scroll down to the from the web section and find a token for free. You don't have to have like pre-purchased tokens or whatever, but yeah, I'm just gonna drag this one that I got from dungeonie.com. It looks like probably for free, one of these options down here. And I'm just gonna drag it out onto the map, onto the dynamic lighting layer, and boom, I have a little light source there. And I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hold down the Alt button so it doesn't snap to any of these boxes. I'm gonna hold down the Alt button while I have this selected. I'm gonna drag it right on top of my little brazier there. So now I'm gonna double click on the token and just like I did before, I'm gonna hit the dynamic lighting button at the top and I'm gonna scroll down to the token emits light and I'm just gonna have it do the same thing that torches do. And so it's gonna emit 20 feet of bright light and 20 feet of dim light 
for a grand total of 40 feet. I'm gonna hit save changes and boom, now that is now emitting light. I'm gonna go ahead and copy that by clicking on it, pressing the control button, pressing the C button at the same time, and then I'm gonna control V over here. Remember holding down Alt so it doesn't snap. I'm just gonna do that three more times here. Or I guess two more times in this room. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here in these rooms that have these torches too. So boom, 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 boom. So now these each have their own little light source in the room. And now if I'm the player, if I'm on this page, I just see these beautiful little flames. I don't see these weird looking tokens and it can be whatever you want. You could probably even find a picture that says light source and put it there to make it even easier for you to know what these images are on your dynamic lighting page. You can make it as extra or as simple as you want. Um, it's your preference, but you now know how to set up that light in the background. Now, the last thing I gotta do is set up the light for my We'll to, we still have to turn on the settings for the page. But the next thing we have to do is set up the light and vision for our token. So I'm gonna go ahead and set vision to yes, right? So this token can see. Then we're gonna set it up to night vision because he is a dwarf. Good old Hargus is a dwarf. And dwarves have 60 feet of dark vision. So we're gonna leave that to 60 feet. And then he is not carrying a torch, so we're gonna lose, we're not gonna have the emits light on or off. It's just gonna be off here. And we're gonna hit save changes. And now Hargus can see. Um, and then the last thing we want to do is make sure our page settings are turned on. So I'm going to go ahead, click on the blue page toolbar. Once again, that's up here at the top. Then click on the page settings button. And then from there, click on the dynamic light button and then turn on dynamic lighting. That makes everything dark on the map except for places where there is light being emitted. And then for giggles, we're going to turn on explore mode just to see how that works. Uh, actually, I'll keep, that, I'll keep that off for now. And then I'll turn it on later to show you exactly what it does. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. I'm gonna hit okay, there we go. And minimize that. And now we have Hargus. So remember, a cool pro tip to see what your character is seeing. Uh, like if you wanna see what your players see, because right now I'm on the GM view. If I wanna see what my players would see if they were controlling Hargus, I can just click on their token, press the control button. Oh, stop doing that. Control button, and then uh, press L, boom. This is what that character sees. This is what Hargus would see if I was the player controlling Hargus. And now as I move around, I can, you know, kind of, you can see the lighting adjust. And you can see some like shadows being created from the torches. It's kind of cool how that's working there. And then I can kind of go down and you can kind of see where I can't go because there's doors. And right, so that's very, very cool. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. So one thing I noticed from earlier is that uh, the restrict movement is not easy to find. So what that is, is like I can actually move my token through the walls without anything stopping me. And some players who get a little, uh, you know, some people like to click their players around while they're waiting for somebody else's turn, for example. Sometimes they might actually click too far and, oh no, I'm in the wall, what did I do? Because um, there's not a restrict movement feature that's obvious. So it is still there. So I'll show you how to restrict movement. And what, what I'm saying is restrict movement, all that does is it, it prevents players from moving through the invisible walls essentially. So to do that, uh, make sure you open up your page settings, go to dynamic lighting, and uh, you'll notice it's not on this page. It's on the page details page. So go back to the page details page, scroll all the way down and click on restrict movement enabled. I know, I don't know why they didn't put it just on this page because everything else is on this page but it's for some reason on the old page. But make sure you have restrict movement checked. That prevent players from being able to move through the walls. So now that I have restrict movement on, I can't just like like fling my character to the other room here and because I'm being restricted. I can't just like jump into that room. So yeah, I can't just be like, oh, I wonder if there's a boss and then peek into the other room and then not tell my DM or whatever. Um, not to say that your players would do that, but just in case, you know, it's a good feature to have. And that way you, the DM, you're the only one that's controlling these doors. Now let's say Hargus wanted to move to this room. All I'd have to do as a DM is go ahead and go back to the dynamic light lighting layer, delete this, or, you know, I would say don't delete it actually. Move it away. That way if they close the door, for example, then you can just grab this and move it back. But yeah, move the pink door out of the way 
and now the player character can just oh look now i'm there uh that's interesting this is an interesting phenomenon so i can I, i've noticed that I, I can't see through it even though i've moved the pink i wonder if that's just a bug since it was recently updated i, I can move through it but i can't see through the doorway which is just an interesting anomaly there. I wonder if we found a bug with the new update, but either way. And you can notice there's some weird lighting issues in the top right there. Oh, I, I know what that is. That's just the, the torch light here. That's the dim outline, but my dark vision sees the edge. There's still some weird glitches there, it looks like. But either way, that's how I'd allow my player characters to go to the other room. Now let's show you what Advanced Fog of War does, or I guess what it's newly called, Explorer Mode. So we're gonna go ahead and turn on Explorer Mode. Now, uh, yeah, so now that I press control L to see what Hargus sees, because Hargus has already been everywhere on the map, you can see that the room that he's in now, this is all brightly colored. This is all brightly colored because this is what he can currently see. Everywhere else on the map is grayed out. He's been everywhere else before, it's grayed out, so he knows what the rest of the map looks like. He just doesn't know what's currently there. So let, let me kind of show you what I mean. So let's say um, my my player characters have been like fighting monsters, right? And there's other monsters in the dungeon. So like maybe maybe they went to this room, maybe they went to this room before and there weren't any monsters, but now monsters have like sniffed where they were going and now they found where they're at. So Hargus, Hargus still knows that room's over there, but he doesn't know that the GM has placed a monster over there. But when Hargus gets a little closer, Whoops, I think something's wrong with my mouse. I think it's double clicking too much, but oh yeah. Let me take out the doorway. So let me take out the doorway there. Take out this doorway too. And so now let's go ahead and press control L again to see what Hargus sees. So as Hargus gets closer, oh no, there's a monster that I didn't see there before. Oh no, R roll initiative. That's all that uh, explorer mode really does is it shows the players can, if they have a large dungeon, they can see where they've already been, but they don't they don't necessarily know if there's anything else in that room unless they're physically, if they physically can see it. So for example, you could load it up with roaming monsters or wandering monsters, or you know maybe there's another party in there, I don't know. You can get as fancy as you want with, uh, with how you want to run this. Um, but yeah, that's it for dynamic lighting and yeah, hopefully I was able to answer most of your questions about the new update. If you have any questions or if you'd like to hear more about Roll20 or some of the other features that we have going on, let me know in the comment section below and go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Subscribe to the channel. I know we have a lot more new people and I think uh, with the current situation giving me a lot more at home time, I hope to make a lot more videos for y'all and make this transition to online play a little bit less rocky. Uh, so let me know what your questions are. Like the video, subscribe, and yeah, have a great day. See you next time. Bye.